Hey everybody on YouTube, this is the Surface Pro 4 i7 and uh, there is a really great post right now by Bsoft16384 and he figured out um, how to alleviate thermal throttling, or sorry, power limit throttling on the Surface Pro 4 i7. And we're going to show that in just a second. And I'm I'm kind of kicking myself because this is the exact same thing I did on the Surface Pro 3 to make it work correctly. But uh, on the Pro 4, when I saw the power limit throttling, I assumed that you know it was a it was a hard limit, which according to the documentation it should be. Um, and I tried actually pointing a fan at at the back of this device, but I was doing it from this side running off of a surface book and it really didn't make a difference at the time at least not noticeably but if you point the fan in the right position you can take advantage of uh, a lot more power on this device so let's go ahead and get started we're going to run our obligatory minecraft um, test and we're going to wait until we see power throttling kicking in so the key statistic you're going to want to look at is the package TDP right there. So the package TDP tells you how much uh, <clears throat> power the processor is using. So let's load up Minecraft. I've got frame limiting turned off so it's running full speed. And you can see right now it's using the, the full package TDP, you know, for anywhere from 22 to 25 watts. That's what it has available to it. So, you can see the power limit throttling is going to kick in fairly quickly. We'll just let that heat up. And we'll wait. What we're waiting to see is the package TDP drop down to um, less than 15 watts. So that's what we're looking for. And this is normal usage, so. You can see our frame rate's around 100. And it's running full power. Okay, boom, power limit throttling kicked in. So what was assumed to be a 15 watt limit hitting, it was, it's not actually the case. What uh, BSOF found is there's a sensor on this top right corner that is uh, basically artificially adjusting the power limit uh, wattage uh, factor based on the thermal temperature of the back of the chassis. So similar to the Surface Pro 3, but not but kind of went about it a little bit different way. But uh, we've got our trusty fan here, and we're going to put that on the back. And you can see that uh, I could let this run a little longer, but basically it kind of hovers from 16, 17, but it eventually even gets down to about 10 watts if you let it get hot enough. Um, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll show that here. We'll let that heat up. There was another user that noticed this, that it was it was slightly higher than 15 watts at times. And when he limited it to 15 watts, it stayed at 15 watts. And he was like, why is it bumping up above the 15 watts here? So that was another clue that, that, that there's something else going on, which is that heat sensor on the back of the device. So you can see that it's limited a little bit. The frame rates are going down. It's actually doing pretty well. I think it's because we're in a pretty cold room right now. But if you let this run long enough, it will eventually kind of just cap itself at, at 12 to 15 watts. But uh, on a cold day like today, it looks like it does pretty good. So 
So 15 watts, you can see we're stuck right there. So let's go ahead and plug this uh, fan in. And point that at the back. You can see it now went up to 18 watts. I'll back this out. So with that fan in place, instead of it crawling down to 11 or 12 watts, it's actually using 19 to 20. And this fan is not the best fan. We could probably come up with something uh, better than that. So just for fun, I'm going to turn on this box fan, and we're going to see what that does for performance here. Here we go. So with that box fan going, uh, once it gets up to speed and kind of cools things down on the back of the surface, uh, it will actually let it get up to about 22, 23 watts, which is almost full power. And this seems to be able to sustain pretty much indefinitely, uh, which is really interesting. So there you can see we're back up to 120 frames a second. Full performance, of course we have a large blaring fan on the side right now. Well, the little fan's not loud at all, but the, obviously the box fan's fairly loud. But um, we now have a way to maintain full core i7 speed um, with that ED RAM and do it pretty much indefinitely, which is pretty dang awesome. This is what we've been looking for. So. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm going to run a full gamut of uh, benchmarks now uh, using this setup, hopefully maybe maybe a little bit different fan setup, and see how well that this works. I'm going to shut the box fan off. You can see the power limit throttling actually turned off there with the fan on. So Microsoft and Intel have done something wonky where they've tied the PL1 and they're adjusting it dynamically in the BIOS based on this thermal sensor. So with the little fan on there, we'll take that box fan away. With that little fan on there, um, it's still able to maintain, uh, you know, 20 to 23 watts, which is almost full power. So it's actually a great little fix that we've got running here. There's that fan you can see running on the side and that will really help performance in games. I'm really excited uh, to pull out the Surface Book and uh, do some testing now that we can run this machine at full power because it does have a really powerful uh, graphics processor in it. So uh, stay tuned, we'll have a Surface Book versus Core i7 video coming soon now that we've figured out a way to alleviate the power limit throttling. And we'll see how well this i7 holds up with the Surface Book. So stay tuned, subscribe, and thanks for watching.